Hat, sunglasses, Pepsi, notes, sources, thick skin, check. You already know. Let's go. Golden Blooded is a college football YouTube channel for entertainment. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And let's get into our next college football video. Don't forget to send gear to represent your team. The address is P.O. Box 360, Liberty South Carolina 29657. Yes, we are still doing that. Just wanted to put that reminder in there because I haven't reminded anybody here recently. Big time news out of Clemson, South Carolina. It looks like Dabo Sweeney is back to making good business decisions. He started to, to slip into the land of complacence and mediocrity and kind of overemphasizing the whole family thing. I, I like the, 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 the family environment and promoting all that, but making business decisions based on inside the family, terrible decision, and it bit Clemson right in the rear end this year. They promoted Brendan Streeter to offensive coordinator in 2022, and it was not a good idea. First of all, Brendan Streeter was not a good quarterback at Clemson. He was a quarterback at Clemson from 1996 to 1999. Overall, he was 294 for 519. That's a 56.6% completion percentage through for 3,504 yards, 17 touchdowns, but 26 interceptions. Not a good quarterback at all. And apparently, he wasn't a good offensive coordinator either because Clemson did struggle this year under Brendan Streeter. They averaged 33.2 points per game, which was 30th. That's, that's not a terrible offense. But it's definitely not good. They averaged 232 passing yards a game, 178 rushing yards a game, and 410 total yards a game. Again, that's not in the crapper offense. But it's not up to standards in Clemson. And everybody knew that there was an issue. Even when they made the transition over to Cade Klubnick, it still wasn't very good. They were not good in that Orange Bowl. So this was a much needed decision that Dabo Sweeney needed to make. And he did it. I'm actually a little bit surprised. He did the right thing, though. This is the right move. What did they do? Well, breaking news. They went out and got Garrett Rowley as their new offensive coordinator. He was the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach at TCU, so he will be the new offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach at Clemson. He is the younger brother of Lincoln Rowley, and he's already had some success. He has three years of experience as an offensive coordinator. Starting in 2020 at SMU, they went 7-3 that year. He averaged 38.6 points per game, which was 15th, 318 passing yards a game, 176 rushing yards a game for a total of 494 total yards a game. Now, before he got there in 2019, SMU did already have a potent offense, averaging 41.8 points per game, which was 7th, but... He was a good offensive coordinator. It didn't really slide under him. And in 2021, SMU went 8-4. They averaged 38.4 points per game, which was 10th. 304 passing yards a game, 162 rushing yards a game, for a total of 466 total yards a game. So in 2022, he made the jump to TCU. TCU went 13-2, averaged 38.8 points per game, which was 9th, 261 passing yards a game, 158 rushing yards a game, and 455 total yards a game. Before he got to TCU the year before in 2021, they averaged just 28.7 points per game, which was 66th. So TCU had massive, massive improvement. In fact, I will venture to say this. He might be the reason why I had the worst pick of the entire season. I picked TCU to finish dead last. I thought they were going to have some identity crisis issues because Gary Patterson was there for forever. When you thought TCU, you thought Gary Patterson. Garrett Rowley brought in a potent offensive plan. Already had a good quarterback in there with Max Duggan, but they weren't executing offense very well. Garrett Rowley did execute the offense really, really well at a high level. So much to the point that TCU got to the national championship. Yes, they got obliterated in the national championship by Georgia, but nobody saw TCU doing that. So looking back at 2022, here's how Clemson looked at Georgia Tech. They won 41-10. Offense looked decent, I guess. Not great. FCS Furman won that game 35-12. Offense did not look good at all. Beat Louisiana Tech 48-20. Offense looked decent at Wake Forest. Beat them in two overtimes, 51-45. Offense didn't look all that good, but they did enough. NC State at home, they won that game 30-20. Offense did not look good. At Boston College, won 31-3. Once again, the offense didn't look good. At Florida State, they won 34-28. First half, the offense looked good. Second half, not so much. Syracuse won that game 27-21. Offense looked horrific. In fact, if Syracuse hadn't made so many mistakes, Syracuse would have won that football game. At Notre Dame, they lost that game in a blowout, 35-14. to That was the worst we saw Clemson's offense the entire year up to that point. Although they didn't look good against Syracuse in that win. Then they played Louisville at home, won that game 31-16. Didn't look good though in the offensive side of the ball. Beat Miami at home, 40-10. Offense looked okay, I guess. They lost to South Carolina 31-30. And of course, you know, 
the offense didn't look good. Cade Klubnick did look good against North Carolina in the ACC championship game. They won that game 39-10. to Offense looked like it took a major step forward in one game, but that proved to be a joke because in the Orange Bowl, they got blown out by Tennessee 31-14. to Offense looked terrible. So let's look at the 2023 football schedule, and I'm going to highlight the games where offense is going to be super, super important. Now, offense is always important, but some of these games, if you have an off game on offense, it'll be okay. But in some of these games, if you have an off game on the offensive side of the ball, it's not going to be okay. So I broke it down into three sections, out-of-conference games, conference road games, and conference home games. So first, they're out-of-conference games. You get FCS Charleston Southern, not going to be that important. FAU at home, not going to be that important. You get Notre Dame at home. You better play your A game against Notre Dame. Otherwise, you could lose to Notre Dame at home. Defense should be good, but you need a lot of offensive production. I mean, look at last year. I know it's home, but learn from your mistakes. At South Carolina, we all know offense is going to be very, very important in that game. Defense important as usual, but you better be able to put up a lot of points against Spencer Rattler on the road. So here's our conference road games. Really, there's only one game that I'm really looking at that I'm like, man, if they have an off game against that team on the road, they're going to lose. At NC State, no, not really. NC State never really has a good offense. Good defense, though. So as long as your defense shows up and plays their A game, you should beat NC State on the road. At Syracuse, once again, don't think you have to play your A game on offense, but don't be terrible at the same time. At Miami, you definitely don't have to play your A game in that game. Miami's not going to be good again. Better than this past year, but not going to be an elite team. But on the road to Duke, that's the one out-of-conference road game where you better play your A game or Duke can beat you. They're going to be good once again in 2023. So what about their conference home games? There's two big-time conference home games where you better play your A game on the offensive side of the ball. The two games that, eh, maybe not so much, Georgia Tech, even though they're going to be better, as long as you play your C-plus or B-minus offensive game, you should beat Georgia Tech. Wake Forest is going to take a significant step backwards, losing Sam Hartman. So as long as you play your B game, when it comes to offense, you'll beat Wake Forest. Two games I'm looking at as far as home conference games where you better play your A game to win. Florida State at home. I have Florida State taking an even bigger step this year and getting to the ACC championship. And then, of course, North Carolina home. Drake May coming back. You better play your A game on the offensive side of the ball or North Carolina will beat you in a shootout. So with the new hiring of Garrett Rowley and Caden Klubnick as your starter, I do think Clemson's offense will take a step forward this year. I think they'll definitely get to the ACC championship game with either one loss or being undefeated. And I think it'll be a rematch against Florida State. Things can get interesting in the ACC championship. Right now, I actually have Florida State getting the revenge and beating Clemson. But you never know. Things might change in the offseason that might change my mind. So y'all let me know in the comments section. Do you think this is a great hire by Clemson? I think it was the best hire possible. In fact, I was wanting West Virginia to get Garrett Riley. But of course, Neil Brown wants to call the plays again. West Virginia's in bad shape, folks. Number two, how much better do you think the offense will be under Garrett Riley? Number three, do you think Clemson will be better in 2023? That's all I got for for this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on my next show.